We welcome in now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, the one and only voice of the Cougars. Greg Rebell joins us. Greg, look at that. Happy around. Friday. Looking fantastic as uh, you give an ode to the blackout oh. that's going to happen tomorrow. And I missed the music. On Saturday. Yes, and, and the Canadian National Anthem. It's a great day. Of course, the more appropriate music is, is is the birthday song. Happy birthday to you, Spencer Linton. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate Twenty-seven years that. old. I can't believe it, man. It's when just... I came in the studio, it was twenty-eight. Now it's twenty-seven. <laughs> I like the direction we're going with this. He's he's Benjamin Button here on the sports nation. <laughs> I will take it. My hairline says otherwise, but I, but I but I will take it. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, you and me both. <laughs> Greg, we've been discussing uh, the potential impact of the results for both BYU football and basketball on a Super Saturday on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Which game do you feel like will have the more lasting impact, football against San Diego State or basketball against Utah? Well, I think basketball is going to have many more opportunities, uh, you know, to, to, to make lasting impressions and, and have games with long-term ramifications. Uh, it's one of many happening for the Hoopsters tomorrow. It's a big game, don't get me wrong. But I, I think that in terms of uh, a 10-win season, uh, the bounce back from last week, and how we're going to remember and think about this uh, 2020 BYU football team. I think tomorrow's game is pretty big. Um, it's, a, it's a December home game for the first time ever. Uh, it's, a, it's unusual in so many ways this season. But I think it is, uh, I, I think, a little bigger uh, on the gridiron than maybe, than maybe on the hardwoods. Uh, not, to, not to diminish at all the importance of a rivalry win against the running Utes. But uh, there will be many more opportunities for BYU to, to do things that will... Uh, uh, you know, put them in a good stead relative to the postseason. So uh, that's just my my short term impression right now. Yeah, and it's interesting because basketball is time to make up a what you what you hope is a win, right? But if BYU stumbles and loses, then they they could still beat San Diego State. They could still have shot at Gonzaga and St. Mary's multiple times. Football, we, football, we don't want it to feel like a one in a eight where it was like those were really good teams, but they didn't finish very strong, and so we don't think of them as one of the very good to great teams in BYU history. But this team has a chance to be uh, remembered in that ilk forever. We'll remember this season forever because of COVID and how BYU played so well. But they have a chance to finish really, really strong and, and have a special season. Yeah, last year ended up with those with those back to back losses, the San Diego State game, followed by uh, the Hawaii Bowl loss in a game that you look at. You look at all the numbers from last year in, in Honolulu and you think, how, how did BYU actually lose that game? Everything said they were going to win it. Um, and, and so it was it was a downer end to last year. Seven and six felt like an underachievement. And this year, I think just getting you know, to 10 games, 11 games, 12 games is a major achievement. The fact that BYU could end up with, you know, 10 or 11 wins uh, is, uh, is just underscores how difficult it's been to get games played this year. So I think BYU will find itself in an exclusive and very impressive company by getting to 11 and 12 games and ideally to 10 and 11 wins. It's been almost a decade, guys, since BYU's gotten to double-digit wins. Uh, that that first season as an FBS independent ended up at 10 and three and BYU hasn't been in 10 win territory since. So that's also meaningful as well. And I think Kalani's talked about it as well. He thinks that 10 wins is, is a meaningful milestone and a, and a meaningful benchmark for this team to achieve. And they get that chance uh, tomorrow, uh, San Diego States, uh, it's it's tough game, guys. Uh, they, you saw what they did last year. BYU threw the ball well, uh, gained a decent number of yards, couldn't put the ball in the end zone last year. And and that's, you know, San Diego State's MO. That's what they do. They will frustrate you. And so the Cougs will have to play well uh, to get to 10 wins. Um, and and uh, San Diego State's got its own challenge. The, the Aztecs have never beaten BYU in back-to-back -back meetings. They got the win last year, but they've never, ever made it two in a row against BYU and the Cougs have a significant advantage uh, playing in Provo over San Diego State over the years of 116 of the 18 that they've played uh, at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. So a uh, lot, lot of things in play tomorrow. And uh, you know, the game last year against San Diego State and the game last week against Coastal Carolina are, are both you know lessons learned type of games for BYU and pretty good examples of, of what either and both of those teams try to do to beat you and they did it successfully. Then there's the Zach Wilson angle on this, Greg, and it's a really interesting one because obviously he's first-round guy. Like, I'll be shocked if he comes back. So this is probably his last game at BYU. He played in this game last year, came back, but it was probably he was probably a little rushed. He, he reveals later he couldn't fully grip the ball and throw like he wanted to. This is this is uh, Boise State now, San Diego State on the Zach Wilson revenge tour. I, I expect a big game from Zach. 
Well, BYU threw again for a decent number last year. Uh, it was all about impact throws, when they came, and and how they performed inside the red zone. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think Zach and the entire offense uh, ha have a lot to prove tomorrow. Uh, you know, if you if if you you know had said Coastal's going to score twenty two points, huh. does BYU does BYU win that game? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, n nobody would have argued otherwise. So last week was. Um, you know that 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 was a reality check, and 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 you know no touchdowns. App. I mean, would you thought would you have thought that it's possible for BYU to a, you know, go a half without a touchdown, which is what happened in the second half, Ugh. or go a quarter without a completed pass? Both those things happened last Wild. week. Wild. Of all of all teams, the BYU team of 2020 would not be stuck in those categories of not scoring a touchdown an entire half of play and, and not completing a pass an entire quarter of play. But both of those things happen. So the, the, there's a lot to get done tomorrow to prove that the, the, that BYU has this bounce back ability and that that was truly a blip um, because the offense, you know, underperformed uh, as tough as tough as it was for the defense to get Coastal's offense off the field last week. And that was a major storyline. And while BYU was certainly explosive enough, um, it comes down to touchdowns and BYU, you know, didn't have enough of them last week. The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rebell with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, we've been talking about the bowl game scenario, Greg, and Zach Wilson was asked earlier this week, hey, if you had a chance to sit out and get ready for the NFL, would you do that and not play in the bowl game? And he quickly said, no, I'm going to take full advantage of all these opportunities. I want to play in the bowl game with my guys. We just don't know when and uh, who BYU is going to play. If it's not a New Year's Six after the loss at Coastal Carolina, what do you think is the best case scenario for BYU in a bowl game scenario in terms of opponent, location, and date? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I think anything warm would be ideal, would, would, would put itself into, into, into the best case possibility. But it seems like a lot of, uh, you know, conference affiliations are, are, uh, are being asterisked this year uh, for, for COVID. And so I really don't know exactly what the most reasonable or logical tie-in for BYU is right now, because I think, you know, ESPN and these bowl organizers are going to get together and just kind of see, um, you know, what fits as opposed to, you know, what leagues have their pecking order truly fulfilled this year. So I, I think it's just wide open and, and I expect to be uh, surprised and ideally pleasantly surprised as to where BYU ends up. Let's talk about BYU and Utah and hoops tomorrow. Obviously a bounce back game for the Cougars who lost Wednesday to Boise State. In come the Utes, team that beat BYU in overtime after Yoli Childs cramps up there in the last five minutes. And Utah never led. But this is kind of a fun matchup because BYU's hungry and trying to figure themselves out. Uh, and then Utah comes in having only played two games. So what do you think of the matchup? Well, it's early, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Utah ends up to be the best team um, of, of the two P, of the two BYU's playing this week. I know that there was a lot of thought that uh, that Boise State, uh, you know, could be the, you know one of the best teams BYU sees in the non-conference. They're certainly very good. I I suspect that Utah might be even a bit better um, that, than than Boise. Uh, losing Booth Gotch is big, but the guys they bring back they, they bring back a lot more than BYU brought back, right? And and so that fact alone, the fact that Utah, you know, beat BYU with last year's group, uh, most of that group is back. And, and BYU is still a work in progress trying to figure out who's going to be that next guy after Alex Barcelo. Significant challenge for BYU without the, the, without the true home court advantage. And I think we're, you know, we're finally seeing in games like Boise State where, where lack of a crowd means something, where, where a team can come in and feel more comfortable about their chances to win, even when things go against them. You know, when BYU makes that run from down double digits, never got over the hump um, and, and, I think college basketball more than any other sport is the one where a, a crowd actually does mean something relative to a competitive advantage. And BYU hasn't felt that yet this year. And I think felt it's lack for the first real time uh, against Boise state. So uh, they're not going to have that with them uh, when they take on the run in Utes and, and like Boise state, you know, Boise state beat uh, BYU in overtime last year, the Utes beat BYU in overtime last year. So both teams had that recent success uh, to lean back on. And, and I use the phrase work in progress, and I still believe that's where BYU is right now. Um, so many new pieces trying to be fit in and, and, and styles of play to be uh, determined. And uh, in a lot of ways, it's, it's intriguing. And in some ways, the progress might at times be frustrating in terms of the pace. But uh, this is a group that I think ultimately will be a very good team in a very good league. I think the WCC's already WCC's already shown early in this season that uh, it's going to give BYU all the cachet it needs to put itself in position to be a postseason team. Greg, 
Alex Barcelo has been dynamite, to say the least. He's averaging basically 20 points a game. He's Mr. Consistency from uh, the field and from the three-point line. Every time he puts up a shot, you think it's going in because he's been that good. Yet BYU is still searching for a second bucket getter, a second score. Which player do you think would benefit BYU the most by stepping up and being that second scorer? I think it's got to be Matt Harms. Uh, you know, Coach Mark Pope uh, post game the other night said, you know, the, the seven for 10 w- w- was great. We need that to be 15 for 18. So he's wanting mm. Matt Harms to get more looks. And if Matt Harms gets more looks, he's going to make a decent share of them by where he is and, and, and what kind of presence he is around the basket. So I, I think it's going to be Matt and, and you'll have a, a true backcourt front court tandem going and, and Matt got himself to double digit scoring on a season average the other night. And I think he'll probably stay there. And, uh, you know, Coach Pope indicates he needs more looks from Matt. That's a pretty good sign that uh, that Harms will be that guy. Do we feel like there's going to be any shakeup in the starting lineup soon? Because you've got three seniors that it makes sense to start. Connor Harding's a little bit of an enigma right now. I all think we think, hey, he could be really good. Hasn't quite kind of raised his game to the he's a junior. He's a little bit more in the offense. I'd love to see that tomorrow night or, or soon and or Spencer Johnson, Gideon George. BYU's got options, but they need a guy to kind of emerge right now, right? Yeah, I, I think if there's one guy that might um, end up taking someone's spot at some point, I think Spencer Johnson's the best uh, the best candidate for that right now. Uh, he's he's proven to look pretty comfortable when he gets out there, and um, I, I think you know there are still some other players with uh, with room to grow in terms of what coach might have expected them to be uh, early in the season. But I think Spencer's kind of come as advertised, and and his preseason was a little bit um, you know uh, physically hampered, and 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 uh, and so he's kind of just you know still maybe getting into true playing shape, but he's getting there pretty quickly, and I really like what I've seen from him. And so I, th- I think if there is going to be any kind of modification, it might be in where he. Is ends up uh, in that rotation. Greg, great to catch up with you. We're looking forward to a super Saturday. We know that uh, you're going to rest the vocal cords tonight because you'll be talking a lot tomorrow. We wish you the best of luck with that. And uh, yeah, we'll be talking to you soon. Yeah, we've all got a a good, fun, long day uh, in (laughs) store tomorrow. Uh, TV and radio, it's going to be a blast. And uh, here's hoping for two two wins. Amen to that. Thanks, Greg. Uh, At least two. There's more than that. Women's basketball, there's a lot more going on. Everybody wins. (laughs) <laughs> for the it. games I'm calling. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. All right, Greg. Talk to you later. Thanks, guys. Greg Rebell on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Five Eastern.